definitely didn't need to buy all these books. This isn't great lighting, but it never is in this room. Um, welcome back to my channel. So I'm just going to do like a weekly vlog. Granted, I'm starting this on a Friday. Um, but we're going to ignore that. It is currently, it's currently two, ten past two in the afternoon. I don't really have any kind of like plans as such. Well, I want to go to the works. Basically, they're, they're discontinuing their rewards program, which to be fair, it does make sense. I'm sad about it, but it makes sense. Um, so I thought I would go to the works today, get some books, because I'll still get a voucher at the end of this quarterly period. It because after that they're just stopping it. Let's go get some books. Do I need some? No. But I did have a really good reading month. In February, I read eleven books. Yeah, eleven books, which is absolutely wild. Anyone who's watched the previous my previous videos of this year will know that um I set a goal on Goodreads of 25 books. Now, doing the maths, as we all do, I've read 19 books this year, which is absolutely wild. I knew that I was going to have a good reading month in February because I came with a placement and I was on placement in January, which I feel like knowing the amount of books I've read then is a good decide. Like, it will show me how many I could read when I'm like working full time, like in that career. Also, my main plan is I want to film my wrap up today, like my February reading wrap up. But I've got some exciting videos planned for this month. One of them, originally I just preliminary planned for being February, but I didn't want to over my, well, overwhelm myself with the amount of books that I had like currently reading, especially because one of the books is a big book such a big book but I'm so excited to read it like I'm so excited no thoughts just vibes for this video but also here's the makeup in full light I am really happy with this makeup actually um apart from here let's see what books we can find I'm not going for anything particular I know that there's probably something so even if I only come away with bomb book well I don't need any more books but you know what I mean so much later in the sense that I went out at like quarter to three currently nine I I like to point out I got back at like half seven not from the bookstore I did do go and do some food shopping first beforehand this lighting makes my hair look so nice I feel like curls look so pretty when they start to drop out slightly so pretty anyway books what I wrote rewind a little bit I was listening to Assistant to the Villain on the way to the works. I literally read a chapter and a bit um, on audiobook because that's a problem even though it's only like 13-ish pages. It takes like half an hour to listen to. Before I get onto the books I bought from the works, I want to rewind. I don't know whether I mentioned this in a video as to having bought it, but I got Knife Skills for Beginners by Orlando Murin. This is a murder mystery, um, and it says when Chef Paul Delamere takes a teaching job, job, a job teaching at an exclusive residential cookery school in Belgravia, the only thing he expects his students to murder is his taste buds. But on the first night, the unthinkable happens. Someone turns up dead. The police are convinced Paul is the culprit. After all, he's good with the blade. Was first on the scene, and everyone knows it doesn't take much to push a, a chef over the edge. To prove his innocence, he must find a killer. Could it be one of his students or the owner of the school, a woman with secrets and a murky past? If Paul can't solve the mystery fast, as well as teach his students how to make a perfect hollandaise sauce, he'll be next to get the chop. Yes, I did speak pretty fast. I'm trying to get through it quickly, because I've got plenty of books. Um, this was just really interesting, and I think I picked it up like seven pounds from Asda. And yes, it's one of the books where pretty cover story make it really interesting for me to pick up as a hardback. Then I picked up the list of suspicious things this I bought from Tesco. Oh, I'm missing two books that I need to show you. Back to this book for the moment. I paid, I want to say six pounds for this. Um, yes, yeah, the list of suspicious things by Jenny Godfrey. It says Maggie Thatcher is prime minister. Drain pipe jeans are in and Miv is convinced that her dad wants to move their family down south because of the murders. 
Leaving Yorkshire and her best friend Sharon simply isn't an option. No matter the dangers lurking around their way, or the strangeness at home that started the day Miv's mum stopped talking. Perhaps if she could solve the case of the disappearing woman, women, they could stay after all. So Miv and Sharon decide to make a list. A list of all the suspicious people and things down their street. People they know, people they don't. But their search for the truth re reveals more secrets in their neighbourhood, within their families, and between each other than they ever thought possible. What if the real mystery Miv needs to solve is the one that lies much closer to home? Just sounded interesting, and I think this book I picked <laughs> This is really sad. But this one I picked up because my car lost <laughs> its MOT. <laughs> and it was like, it felt like a mental victory. So I bought a book. Um, I don't remember what made me buy this one. I actually don't. Um, yeah. Anyway, the day prior to buying that book, I had a test at university. It was to do with medications and stuff, like an online test. Um, and so for the whole actual hassle of having done that test, I bought two books. Now, I have since, like, passed, found out that I got all of the answers correct which i needed to anyway because i needed to get 100 percent they're also like celebration books yes i know we all love excuses to buy books why am i loving this lighting with my makeup <sighs> anyway first one i bought was done and dusted by lila sage this has been making its rounds recently on the on youtube really and it says the first time in her life clementine any writer has no idea what she's doing she's accomplished Everything on her to-do list, she left her small hometown of Meadowlark, Wyoming, went to college and made a career for herself by doing her favourite thing, riding horses. But after an accident makes it impossible for her to get back into the saddle, she has no choice but to return to the hometown she always wanted to escape. Luke Brooks is Meadowlark's most notorious bad boy, bar owner and bachelor. He's also the unofficial fifth member of the Ryder family. As Emmy's older brother's best friend, Luke spent most of his childhood antagonising her. It's been years since he's seen her, but when she walks into his bar and back into his life, he can't take his eyes off her. Against his best judgement, he wants to do a whole lot more than just laugh at her. As things between Emmy and Brooks heat up, it gets more difficult for him to keep his hands off of her. Can he help her get her spark back or will they both go up in flames? Yeah, I've just seen great things and in a weird way when I walked into the works that day, because I got these from the works as well, my goal was spend about £6, whether that be the three for six or two for the three, um, like two but the three pounds each um yeah i've just i've just seen loads of people reading it um i thought i'd pick it up it's probably not going to be an immediate read as you can probably guess then i picked up the maid by nita prose part of the reason why i picked it up is because i've seen the mystery guest which is like a sequel to this um it says it begins like any other day for molly gray silently dusting her way through the luxury rooms at the regency grand hotel but when she enters suite 401 and discovers an infamous de guest dead in his bed a very messy mystery begins to unfold and molly's at the heart of it because if anyone can uncover the secrets between the beneath the surface the fingerprints among the filth it's the maze sounded interesting um again part of me picked it up because i want to read the sequel which obviously currently only out in hardback at the moment but i know that i want to pick it up so i think i bought the knife skills for beginners back in january <coughs> but the list of suspicious things book and the other two they might have been around the 10th luckily we were buying books in march today continuing on with the books i bought in february um from wh mick I picked up Bright Young Women. I'd heard things about it. But it says sorority president Pamela Shumacha is startled awake at 3 a.m. and was shocked to encounter a scene of implausible violence. Two of her friends dead and two others maimed. Thrust into a terrifying mystery, Pamela becomes entangled in a crime that will captivate public interest for more than four decades. Tina Cannon thinks she has finally found peace after years of hardship when Ruth, her best friend, suddenly goes missing from Lake Sammamis State park on a beautiful summer's day. Now Tina has devoted herself to finding out what happened to her. When she hears about the tragedy in Tallahassee, she knows it's the man the papers refer to as the all-American sex killer. Determined to make him answer for what he did to Ray, she travels to Florida on a collision course with Pamela and one last impending tragedy. It sounds a little bit, yeah it does sound like a murder mystery, but it sounds like a different concept. In that same instance, 
I also bought, I think it's Tokyo Express by Saiko Matsumoto or Saicho. I don't know how to pronounce the author's surname. Um, but it says, in a rocky cave, the bodies of a young and beautiful couple are discovered. The flush in her cheeks suggests cyanide, a lover's suicide, but for shabby local detective, Toragai Jutaro and Kichi Mihara, a young gun from Tokyo, something is not quite right. Together they begin to pick up the knot of a meticulously calculated crime involving corruption, scandal and a fatal train journey. This just first captivated me by the fact that it just said modern classics and then the plot interested me. Like it's a small book, there's less than 200 pages. Actually there's only 150, so it's a novella. I think this is the first time I've actually purchased a novella. But again, it just sounded interesting and like it could be a fairly quick read. Now you'd be thinking, Caitlin, that's five books you purchased in February. Surely you're finished. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint. So I, why did I go into Sainsbury's? Oh yeah, I needed to pick up chicken stock. Use. Um, and I thought, oh, I'll look at their book section because I know that they've got some slightly different ones compared to Tesco and Asda. Like Tesco and Asda, pretty much you can walk into either one of them and they've got like the same books. At Sainsbury's has some slightly different ones. There was I bought two books. I took a couple photos. I took a, yeah, I took a couple photos of others just because they interest me. And I'm and if they're not there the next time I walk into that shop. I want to be able to buy them in the future. First book I picked up was The Philosophy of Love by Rebecca Ryan. It says, what is love? Is it something spiritual or wholly physical? Can our feelings be explained and quantified? Or are we all two halves of a whole? Ask Alice and Luke and you'd receive vastly different answers. Despite her world having been recently dismantled by a messy breakup, Alice would tell you that love is the most important, albeit all bit ineffable, of human experiences, but when she crosses paths with her old school nemesis Luke, he challenges this. Luke is a scientist and his certain love can be measured and explained, just like everything else. So the two decide to make a bet. They'll each venture back into dating and if one of them falls in love, Alice wins. If not, then Luke does. But can anyone win when you're gambling with emotions? Obviously, I'm going to presume that they fall in love in the end, but it just sounded interesting. It might be a little bit of like a STEM romance but more of like the main guys, like a stem. And then I picked up no None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. I have read two, one or two of her books. I've definitely read two, yes. I've read The Family Upstairs and also Then She Was Gone. I read Then She Was Gone years ago um, and I enjoyed both of her books. I have The Family Remains, um, which is the sequel to The Family Upstairs. I also have Invisible Girl and The House We Grew Up In. Um, the House We Grew Up In and Invisible Girl. Well, actually all three of those are in this room currently. Um, but yeah, I decided to pick this up. It's a little annoying that we've got this slightly short, slightly shorter cover. I like Lisa Jewell's books. And I do quite like the just like solid colour spine. I don't know. Onto the <laughs> onto the books that we bought today. Also slightly um different note. I decided to buy Toffee Fee for the first time in my life. They're not bad. I probably won't buy them again. So in total I spent £22.50 at the works. And I got 10 books, which means on average I spent £2.25 per book which is an absolute steal. Again, like I said earlier, I went for the loyalty card ending. Some of these you will have heard of, some of them you won't. I found them a three for six, not all of them stand out to me. So I got six three for six books. First one I picked up was The Locked Door by Frieda McFadden. Obviously we know she's the author of The Housemaid and The Housemaid's Secret and there's also the third in that Housemaid series. Um, to start with I considered picking up The Housemaid's Secret 
um, and then I decided against it because I haven't read the first one yet but also because I feel like that book's going to remain in the works for a slightly little bit longer um, because it's a little bit more recent. When, while 11 year old Nora Davis was up in her bedroom doing homework, she had no idea her father was killing women, killing women in the basement until the day the police arrived at their front door. Decades later, Nora's father is spending his life behind bars and Nora is a successful surgeon with a quiet, solitary existence. Nobody knows about her past and she'll do anything to keep it that way. Then one of her young female patients is murdered, killed in the same unique and horrific manner that her father used to kill his victims. Somebody knows who Nora is. Somebody wants her to take the fall for this unthinkable crime, but she's not like her father. The police can't pin anything on her as long as they don't look in her basement. The, there was a few books of hers there. I didn't look at the teacher. I looked at the description for Never Lie. I considered Never Lie. I just said to go for this one instead. Then I picked up Winter Keep by Kristen Cashaw. This spine, I just saw the spine of it. You know, like when sometimes you've got the stack of books and then books are stacked up. Like I could just see this. Immediately it captivated me enough to want to read the blurb. And it says Winter Keep is a land of miracles. A democratic republic, a place where people speak to telepathic sea creatures and adopt telepathic foxes as pets. But when Queen Bitterblues em envoys to Winterkeep drowned under suspicious circumstances, she and Gidden and her, and her half-sister Haver set off to discover the truth. Though Visa Cavender is the teenage daughter of a powerful scholar with a fire inside her that is always hungry. She is the key to everything, but only if she can figure out what's going on in Winterkeep before anyone else and only if she's willing to transcend the person she's been all her life. Yeah, so when I saw a list today, it was the first time I've seen it. And then I saw it in a comment on something else. And it was like, what are the chances? That is like really weird. Then I picked up Killers of a Certain Age. And it says, Billy, Mary, Alice, Helen and Natalie have worked for the museum, an elite network of assassins. By the way, these are all women, um, for 40 years. But now their talents are considered old school. When the foursome is attacked during an all-expenses-paid trip to mark their retirement, they realise they've been marked for death by the top-level members of the museum. Working together is the key to their survival and they're about to reach, about to teach the museum what it really means to be a woman and a killer of a certain age. Yeah, that just sounded interesting. So the next book I picked up was Murder on the Lusitana by Edward Marston. It says, September no 1907, George Dillman set sail from Liverpool to New York on the Lusitana's, or the Lusitana's maiden voyage. Posing as a passenger, Dillman is in fact an undercover detective hired by the Cunard line to keep an eye out for petty crimes. But after some uneventful days aboard, the ship's blueprints are stolen and then a body is found. As Dillman works to get to the bottom of the crimes, he makes an unusual friend, first class passenger Genevieve Macefield, and the two undercover and the two uncover secrets aboard the ship that prove explosive. Then I picked up Enchanted to Meet You by Meg Cabot. Now, I saw her name and thought, oh, I've not seen her name in a while because I read Ali Finkel's Rules for Girls, the first one. It's a series, but I only read the first one. Still actually at home. That might be interesting to reread. Um, I don't think I've read... Wait, hold on a second. Is she the Princess Diaries? Oh, I didn't see it. Is she actually the Princess Diaries? Okay. Go, go. I don't know where that came from. It says, as a teenager, lovelorn Jessica Gold cast a spell that went disastrously wrong and brought her a lifetime ban from the world, of World Council of Witches. So no one is more surprised when 15 years later, tall, handsome Derek Winters shows up in her quaint little village and claims that Jess is a chosen one destined to save West Harbour from a sinister force. But just when Jess is beginning to think that she and Derek might have a certain magic of their own, Jess learns he may not be who she thought he was. Now she must make a choice, trust Derek and work with him to protect West Harbour, or use her gift as she always has to keep herself and her heart safe. I think if this was any other author, I might not have picked this up. It does still sound interesting, um, but I think the fact that it said Meg Cabot that I was how did I not realise this was literally Lucy score? I picked up a Lucy score book without realising. I've still not read any of her books. But it was in the three for six. But it's called Maggie Moves On. And it's by Lucy Score. I'm sorry, what? But it says House Flipping Sensation and YouTube star Maggie Nichols can't wait to dig into her next challenge. 
Arriving in a tiny American town with only a coffee maker, Maggie is prepared to restore a crumbling Victorian mansion in four months or less. She has she has her to-do lists, her blueprints and her team. What she doesn't have is, is time for sexy laid-back landscaper Silas Wright. The man takes flirtation to a whole new level and he does it shirtless. He and his dog are impressively persistent, but she's not interested in pushing down roots. Not when fans tune in to watch her travel the country, turning dilapidated houses into dream homes. A short-term fling, on the other hand, could fit nicely into her calendar. After all, Maggie remembers what fun is like, vaguely. As their summer gets downright steamy, Silas manages to demolish the emotional walls she spent years building, sending Maggie into a panic. He is the wrench in her carefully constructed plans. With the end of the project looming, she has a decision to make. But how can she stay when her entire career is building on moving on? I feel like I only read the first part of that. Why is my... My mind has some some reason blocked out a lot of this. But I just thought that this looked really nice. When was this published? I don't think I've heard anyone talk about this. It was 2022. Yeah, it was literally published by... Lu it was literally written by Lucy Score. Like, it doesn't even mention her other books. Clearly, she's... Clearly, she put this out before the other books. I don't know when the first book came out. But yeah, I didn't even realise I picked up a Lucy School book. Some of them, I didn't even look at the author. Also, I didn't mm, mention this, but um, Killers of a Certain Age was by Deanna Rayborn. I said everyone else's. Then on to... The ones that I picked up that were on sale. So I picked up Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. I got this for £2.50 and it says Bradley Graham is pretty much perfect. He's a star football player, manages his OCD well enough and comes out on top in all, all his classes except the ones he shares with Celine Bangora. They used to be best friends until Brad decided he was too cool for conspiracy theory obsessed Celine and abandoned her for the popular kids table. At least that's how Celine sees it. These days there's nothing between them but insults and academic rivalry. But when Celine signs up for a two part survival course in the woods, the last thing she expects is to find Brad right beside her. As the adventure brings them closer together, they start to remember all the good parts of their history. But has too much time passed or just enough to spark a whole new kind of relationship? This is How You Fall In Love by Anika Hussein. Zara's been waiting her whole life for a big love story of her own, so pretending to date her best friend Adnan to cover up his new top secret relationship, not quite what she had in mind. Except there's something in it for Zara too. Her parents love Adnan and dating him might just stop them arguing. While she may not be getting their, her own love story, she could save theirs. But with fake dating comes fake hand-holding and fake kissing and real feelings. And when Yaya... Zara's perfect boy turns up, things get more confusing than ever. So it looks like there could be what people describe as a love triangle. It's obviously not a love triangle. Like, does she choose the childhood best friend or this new guy that's come into the picture? I probably didn't need to buy all these books. Then I picked up Not That Kind of Ever After by Lucy Adams. And it says, Once upon a time in a flat share south of the river, there lived an aspiring author named Bella Marble. Above all things, above her wish to be a writer, above absolutely anything and everything, Bella wants to find love. But one fateful week changes everything. When her best friend moves in with the most boring ogre in history and her perfectly paired parents tell her their own love story is coming to an end, Bella's illusions of finding the one shatter. With the help of her very own knight in shining Armani, Bella ditches the fairy tale. Yet while London may be fresh out of princes, it's got a surplus of frogs and so Bella decides it's high time to write herself a brand new kind of happy ending. Then the, yeah, the final, no, it's not the final book. Don't turn off. It's not the final book that I picked up was The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osman. Um, second book in the Thursday Murder Club series. The main reason I picked this up is because the most, is because the third book is going to remain like I know how psychologically and profit wise how shops are going to think this book isn't going to be out for a while but the third book is going to remain in shops that little bit longer it says Elizabeth has received a letter from an old colleague a man with whom she has a long history he is being hunted and he needs her help his story involves stolen diamonds a violent mobster and a very big mistake as bodies start piling up, Elizabeth enlists Joyce, Ibrahim and Ron in the hunt for a killer. And if they find the diamonds too, well, wouldn't that be a bonus? But this time they, they are up against a ruthless murderer who wouldn't bat an eyelid at knocking off four septuagenarians. Can the Thursday Murder Club find the killer and the diamonds before the killer finds them? I know that Meg absolutely loves this series. And again, I just, I do think I'm going to enjoy it as well. 
although that wasn't the last book that was the last one from the works then I did my shopping in Asda so the first book I picked up was When Grumpy Met Sunshine by Charlotte Stein this is a 2024 release it's literally going to be a grumpy sunshine and he is the grumpy one but it says when grumpy ex-footballer Alfie Harding gets badgered into selling his memoirs he knows he's never going to be able to write them he hates revealing a single thing about himself, is allergic to most emotions and can't imagine doing a good job of putting pen to paper. And so in walks curvy, cheerful, cute as hell ghostwriter Mabel Willeker, who knows just how to sunshine every little detail after Alfie. They banter and bicker their way to writing his life story, both of them sure they'll never be anything other than at odds. But after their business arrangement is mistaken for a budding romance, the pair have to pretend to be an item to satisfy a public reverence for more of this Cinderella story. And now they have to decide, is their fake relationship all for show or something to real so real it might just give them their fairy tale ending. Granted, there probably could have been a better name, but you know what? It might also be the perfect one for the job. And then the book that I picked up is The Expectant Detectives. Cute cover, by the way. And it says, I know people say that your hormones can play havoc with your emotions while pregnant, but in this instance, I was more inclined to blame the murder. When Alice and Joe find themselves unexpectedly pregnant with their first child, they decide to be responsible, switching the dangers of London for the safety of countryside living, though the dead body at their local antenatal class has them rethinking their life choice. With everyone in, their, in the class considered a suspect and with little to do until the baby arrives, Alice sets out to solve the mystery and clear her name alongside her new friends. Between the discovery of a shady commune and the unearthing of a mysterious death years earlier, Alice is soon in way over her head. Can she uncover the truth before tragedy strikes again or her waters break? I know that a lot of people don't like the pregnancy trope. Obviously, it's very much written in the blurb that this is going to be a pregnancy trope. Also, it's annoying that there is literally the sticker on. Luckily, it's just one of the reviews. Yeah, it's by Cat Ailes and it is a Mother's Murder Club mystery. And yes, this is the first in a series, which I didn't realise until I looked inside. Today I have bought, what, 14 books? Yeah, I bought 12. I was just... The pile between what I bought previously and what I bought today. Oh, and um, also I'm going to buy Happy Place in paperback this month, despite not having read a single Emily Henry book. I know, look at me. Maybe I should read an Emily Henry book in the cup. Like, there's a couple of days. It gets, it comes out in paperback on the 7th, so maybe I could read an Emily Henry book in that time. Do I have any on Kindle, though? No. And I kind of, at these days I'm more likely to start it Kindle-wise. Also, I'm... I've been filming for 43 minutes at this point. Oh, Beach Read. It's 99p at the moment. Maybe I'll get Beach Read. I probably didn't need to buy all these books, but Beach Read is currently 99p as I'm filming this on the first. So that would be perfect because getting it on my Kindle will mean that I can read it in the dark. So that is what I'm going to do. Below G and the physical copy. So it's fine. It's 7am and I am off to work. I don't know whether I'll speak to you guys afterwards, but yeah, it's Saturday and off I go. Um, so I'm joining you from my car after work. Um, first of all, this morning I ended up leaving um, for work a little bit too soon. I started half an hour later. Anyway, I've just been to Sainsbury's. Well, I didn't go to Sainsbury's for Sainsbury's. There was a... Um, not a Costa, a Starbucks in it. That's probably blasphemy that I just said Costa instead of Starbucks. Um, I got the brown sugar oat shaken espresso. I've seen so many people try this. Um, I'm trying to like mix it because I've got, they put one of these caps on. It tastes all right to be fair. Um, I might regret it later, having had coffee at... It's half four. No, it's almost five. Um, also, I bought a book. I need to be quick, because I also bought ice cream. Um, I got ten hours to go. Um, so this is kind of what I mean by... There was what feels like indie authors. 
that makes sense. Um, so these are, who are they published by? Published by source books. So yeah, this is kind of like an indie kind of book. It's basically, there's this girl who needs a, um, there's fires in the US um, and her train was cancelled and she needs a lift um, and her ex-friend and enemy pick her up and they go on a detour and there's kind of, or like they're trying to, like they've got something planned for her, she doesn't know it, um, but then they all get trapped um, and she has to trust them even though they had something planned. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get home because I've got the, I've got strawberry ice cream that needs to go in the freezer. I have to get the car door one um, because it was the only strawberry ice cream and I wasn't going to go around um, so many different shops. Um, but yeah, I will join you guys when I'm back home. I started beach read last night, late, late last night. It's good so far. I'm only like 10% of the way through, um, so I don't really have any much to update you on. But I would, again, I'll see you guys when I get home. I've had like half of the coffee. Like, part of me wonders whether the coffee's giving me a headache though. Um, because I basically never have coffee. Because usually when I think about having a coffee, it's like 3 pm, which I know is a bit hypocritical of me for saying I'm having coffee right now. But it was just, I wanted to try it. To be fair though, it's also probably because I only had like three and a half hours of sleep last night. So that does not help. I slept well going into the uh, day previously. And I'll sleep well tonight, going into tomorrow. I know I'm lying down right now. Um, I should, I feel like I should probably play like Sims. I know it's like a reading vlog, but we're just talking about other stuff as well. Yeah, I think I might play Sims. Just because it's something easy for my mind to do. Because although I've had reading once before, like, wake me up, at the same time I feel like it's not going to work this time. Do you get what I mean? Okay, so I haven't updated this reading vlog in the longest of times. I've kind of read a little bit of everything um, in terms of, like, all the books that are on my kind of currently read. So, like, I've got them all neatly stacked. Um, I've read some of Crescent City 1. I've read some of some of knife skills for beginners oh and i've also read some of book lovers um by emily henry i haven't finished it despite the fact that happy place is now currently out in paperback i think i'm gonna wait till after i pay my rent like it's only a week um i also read more of assistant to the villain read some of it on like listen to some of it um, and then kind of finish the chapter by reading it, despite saying that I'm only 86, I've only read 86 pages. Did I mention I had read, started reading Daisy Hates? Also, I got a little bit of bookish mail. I got this, um, bookmark, like, Daisy Hates inspired. I didn't realise that the flower was, like, shone like that. Sorry if that caused any issues for people with epilepsy. It's from this shop called this paperback life um this was like what the thank you came on but yeah it was literally from this paperback life just ordered it off of etsy and obviously it matches the daisy hates logo so well i think when i come to read the other books i think i'm gonna get the designated bookmarks for those as well um and i will definitely be ordering from there again because they are so nice and also they've got like the little tassel because i love the tassel ones or like i like ones where they've got like something dangling from them i don't know it could just be i'm a little kid and i like the flicking around of it i haven't touched this basically this arrived today oh oh my god i forgot about a book delivery that i had um yeah, I haven't touched it anymore since that time, but I got some books. Okay, so I paid a total of £20, and these were, like, new. Um, but I got the Mortal Instruments series from Cassandra Clare. I don't want to tip it forward because they will fall out. I got them from... Where did I get them from? Books to something, I can't remember um and there's the th six books in the mortal instruments series and then there's the shadow hunters codex 
not interested in the codex i just wanted the books have i read any of these books no i don't think i've read any of cassandra clare's other books also i don't know i can't in august i think it is the i can't remember it was her recent book it was cassandra clare's recent book it was like the nice like red cover i think the paperback of that is coming out in like august um so if it is her books and i've read like one of these and enjoyed it i'd be interested to pick it up also i think i'd be interested to pick it up even if i didn't fully get into these books just i picked that up because it was like six 17 pounds no i think it was 16 pounds for the books um and then like four quid delivery which i was like although that's a steep delivery price it's kind of like well i'm still getting these books for less than what i should actually pay for them let me grab the first book out to show you yeah it's literally this series um i if i like these i'd be interested to read the clockwork orange also these are big text um so it would be quite nice to go through and then if i like these books read the books that have got the clockwork orange in them because i've seen megan carrioli i i could be saying her name wrong um i've got like she i've seen her read them and enjoy them so i'd be interested to get onto those i think based off of this video i kind of need to go on a little bit of a ban or at least like a little more of a consideration before i buy books but that was too good of a bargain to pass up this vlog is already like 50 minutes long after i've edited some of it like i've literally managed to get out eight minutes of footage already all because i bought books sorry but um this is a long one so i hope you've enjoyed so far i haven't finished it's currently friday night so i think it has literally been a week at this point this vlog is turning into one big book haul i didn't go to the works for this book however i spotted it first before spotting in the book that i actually wanted um but i picked up the comeback by lily chu i think that's how you pronounce her surname um i got it as you can see for one pound fifty yes that is part of the reason why i bought it and then the book that i went into the works for now i think I mentioned this book earlier in this vlog, or at the very least, I've mentioned it in videos. Um, now, it's got Sprayed Edges. I did not go there for Sprayed Edges. Happy surprise. And actually, these are Sprayed Edges, this colour Sprayed Edges, I'm not mad about because it does match the cover. But I picked up Happy Place by Emily Henry. But this follows Harriet and Wynne. And they are together. They are, I think they're engaged um anyway each year they go on a holiday with their friends um to this like place basically the plan was one of them was gonna go with like an excuse for why the other wasn't there um and then both of them are there because it's the final summer that they can spend there because the place is up for sale and basically they have to pretend they're in a relationship for one last holiday and obviously forced proximity um but obviously i'm not even finished on book lovers but i am enjoying it so far i feel like i'm gonna end it out here because i feel like i've got other videos going on in the background at the same time and i just i can't focus on doing a reading updates and whatnot um last night i started the spare room that was literally the final update that's all i did um and that was linked to a video that i'm filming i hope you guys enjoyed let me know kind of what sort of videos you want to see from me and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys